In this video, I'm rendering this simple 4 second scene in Blender with cycles, comparing the rendering time between GTX 1650 Super and RTX 2060. In my last two videos, I first compared Windows and Ubuntu, and then how much difference does a RAM upgrade make to rendering speed. At the final, I was able to improve the rendering times by 7.4%, which is not phenomenal, but nonetheless a step in the right direction. Now it's time for the final step, matching up the GTX 1650 Super, which is a typical mid-range graphics card for budget gaming PCs with RTX 2060 with muscles to cross ray tracing calculations. We know that RTX is a better card, but by how much? Let's find out. Choosing a graphics card can be tricky, so why did I choose to buy RTX 2060 to upgrade my PC? GTX 15 Super is a lean 1080p gaming card for popular multiplayer games and for budget gamer PCs like my HP Pavilion gaming PC. Both cards are built on the Turing architecture. However, GTX does not have ray tracing or path tracing capabilities like the RTX cards. That means calculating things like light bounces on the GTX takes ages. My 4 second animation that I used as a benchmark in my two previous videos took two and a half hours to complete. I don't play games that much. Instead, I need raw processing power for Blender to work faster in the viewport and render Blender animation faster. With this upgrade, I'm expecting to see at least 25% faster render times. Let's see if I'm right. Here's a table of important specifications. One consideration when upgrading the GPU is the power consumption. My HP PC is equipped with a meager 310 watt power supply unit that somehow handles the GTX 1650 Super well, rated 100 watts, but would most likely fail to power the RTX 2060, rated 160 watts. For that reason, I need to fit a 450 watt ATX power supply unit inside the small HP case. Let's see if that is possible. Why did I choose RTX 2060 for my budget PC instead of 3060? First, the cost. Incredibly, the cost for 2060 is equal to 1650 Super on Amazon when I saw it, I bought mine immediately. 3060 is much more expensive. It's a very cost-effective improvement, it's a no-brainer, and I can sell my GTX 1650 Super for someone who needs it only for gaming. Secondly, the Intel H470 chipset on my motherboard has bottlenecks that make using any faster GPU useless. It has PCIe Express Revision 3, which means that the bus speed is limited to 8GB per lane. That means faster cards like RTX 3060, designed for PCIe version 4, with 16GB per second lane speeds, go to waste on a slower system like this. It simply doesn't make any sense to boot an engine from a Ferrari to a Fiat Panda. Thirdly, 2060 has the lowest power consumption of all RTX cards and I wanted to make sure it runs on my system without hiccups. Lastly, why did I choose RTX 2060 instead of Radeon RX 6600, which also has ray tracing capabilities and is overall a pretty decent GPU? Comparing them on the GPU benchmark, they do seem evenly matched, but 2060 is a clear winner. Why? Well, I was on the verge of getting RX 6600 because it has lower power consumption and I thus could use it with my small power supply. But thankfully, in the last minute, I found out about the Blender benchmark on Open Data. Looking at the available stats, it became obvious that NVIDIA's card performs way better than the Radeon on Blender, and that was the most important selling point for me. It has 67% higher score than 1650 Super and 50% better score than RX 6600. But RX 6600 is not a bad choice either. Comparing the results with the 1650 Super, it has 34% better score. Overall, 2060 is the most rational and cost-effective upgrade to make rendering in Blender faster in my setup. Beyond that, it will also boost the performance of my video editing software HitFilm Express making this video production faster. Adding 2GB of video RAM is also a 50% increase, which should give a nice boost to overall performance in Blender and other applications. 
RTX 2060 will be a popular card for some time because many people have older PCIe 3.0 revision chipsets on their motherboards and 2060 is the best card for that. Finally, it's a good investment for future. When I get to build my next PC for Blender, I can still use my HP Pavilion with the 2060 as a single unit render form to give an extra boost to cut down render times in larger animations. I'll add a link below if you want to check the price and availability of 2060 cards on Amazon. Okay, enough talk. Let's install the 2060 and see how it performs. First, I need to remove the GPU and PSU from the case. Easy. Then I need to fit the new PSU in. Easy. No. Not easy. It doesn't fit. Even more so, the old PSU has a proprietary power cable, so this is a lost cause. I'm sure my 310 watt power supply doesn't have enough juice to run it. Well, moving on, let's attach the 2060 to the PCIe X16 socket. Snug fit, wouldn't you say? Well, as the new PSU doesn't fit, I'll try just using the power from the PSU and use the old one for the motherboard. But I quickly realized that's not going to work without jumper wires, so let's skip that. As I'm out of options, I decide to try if 2060 somehow works with my smaller power supply. I am highly skeptical and I expect it to fail when rendering. But lo and behold, the system boots. Now I think it's a good idea to update the graphics driver, so let's do that. Reboot and check the settings. Still looking good. Time to open up Blender and put this beast to work. I'll press Ctrl F12 and we are cooking. I am watching my PC with hawk eyes to see any signs of failure, but surprisingly it's running smoothly. No problem. What is going on? This is contrary to the NVIDIA's recommendation of using at least a 500 watt power supply. Oh yeah, if you want to match up your rig and render the same scene yourself, you'll find a link to the Blender file in the description below. So our fastest benchmark for GTX 1650 Super in Ubuntu is 150 minutes or 2 hours and 30 minutes. If my prediction of 25% improvement holds true, we should see the render time reduced down to 112 minutes or 1 hour and 52 minutes in Windows 10, shaving off 38 minutes. After this render is done, I run it once more in Ubuntu to see if I can reduce the rendering time even more in Linux. Okay, coming to the last frame and we got Windows 10 has completed the render with a time 95 minutes. In one hour and 35 minutes, we got an excellent performance boost with the RTX 2060 that exceeded my expectations by being 36.7% faster. We saved 55 minutes. I'm very happy with this result. Let's jump over to Ubuntu and reinstall the drivers here. I'm gonna skip that because I did it in the last video. Check it if you need to do it. Opening Blender, we can see that the rendering devices are showing up normally and everything seems to be ready to go. No time to waste, so let's start rendering. This is the final test. Will Ubuntu get a chokehold over Windows when we have more muscle under the hood? Or has the Microsoft team made an unholy pact with dark forces to cheat the victory from the open source OS? How bad will 2060 beat its little brother 1650 Super? And have these upgrades made sense to invest on a budget PC? We are about to find the truth. Let's speed things up and run to the finish line. Last frame is rendering and Ubuntu is giving all the power it has left to crush the last tiles and do the final denoising. Here it is, Blender has finished and the time on the clock is amazing, 75 minutes. We have a winner. Ubuntu rendered the scene in 20 minutes faster than Windows and 75 minutes faster than GTX 1650 Super. That means Ubuntu was 21% faster than Windows. That's a real difference. And RTX 2060 showed a decisive 50% improvement in render time compared to the 1650 Super, cutting down the rendering time in half. 
In total, I spent about $540 for these upgrades, and I am really happy to see a real performance boost. For my use, this upgrade comes super handy, as my modeling, rendering, and video editing will be much faster, until I can build my next PC for Blender. But for now, I'm really happy with the results. If you like these videos, show it by clicking the like and subscribe to my channel. More to come, and you can watch it all here.